yesterday we discussed differential amplifier as a basic building block, how it can be thought of as being evolved from the basic common emitter amplifier. And we saw that we are able to get rid of the large valued bypass capacitor which otherwise would have become necessary to bypass the current source, DC current source and also the need for the coupling capacitor to the input we got rid of by using dual supplies. Today we will learn more about the differential amplifier as such. Let us see, V i 1 and V i 2 are the inputs to the differential ampl amplifier, V naught 1 and V naught 2 are the single ended outputs of the differential amplifier. We have seen that this input is going to be getting distributed as V B E 1 and V B E 2 if we name these transistors as T1 and T2. So, we can say that V i 1 minus V i 2 is the differential input V i differential. And this is also equal to V B e 1 minus V B e 2 going through the loop. So, V B e 1 minus V B e 2 which we have already established is nothing but V B e 1 is equal to V T log tell me let us call this current as I E 1 and this as I E 2 is nothing but V T log I E 1 by I E naught and V B E 2 is nothing but V T log I E 2 by. So, this relationship which is V B E 1 minus V B E 2 is nothing but V T log I E 1 So, this is nothing but V I D or this can be expressed as I E 1 by I E 2 current ratio is equal to one of the most important relationships in integrated circuit. The ratio of the two currents I E 1 and I E 2 is equal to V T log that is exponential exponential V i by So, this is a very important relationship. So, please remember that when he in any transistor configuration, if you are talking of a differential input voltage which is just the difference of the base to emitter voltages that is always equal to the ratio of the currents. They, they need not be connected as a differential configuration. If you just take two transistors arbitrarily and take the difference of these two voltages, it will be the ratio of the emitter currents. So, this relationship is what we are going to use in obtaining the output versus input characteristic of the differential amplifier. We know that the current collector current here is I C 1 and the collector current here is I C 2 at any instant of time. So, what is it? I E 1 by I E 2 is also equal to I C 1 by I C 2 is equal to I E 1 by I E 2 okay, because I C 1 by I C 2 is nothing but alpha times I E 1 and I C 2 is nothing but alpha times I E 2. So, alpha gets cancelled. So, this is nothing but again exponent V i d by 
So, from this relationship we can get that IC1 minus IC2 by IC1 plus IC2 is same as exponent VID by VT minus 1 by exponent VID by VT plus 1 from the ratio relationship. And what is it that we get IC1 minus IC2, okay, you can see here VCC minus IC1 RC is nothing but V01, VCC minus IC1 RC is this voltage and this is VCC minus IC2 RC and therefore, we have V01 minus V02 which is differential output voltage being equal to V01 minus V02 is nothing but IC2 minus IC1 into RC. So, this is nothing but this you multiply by RC, this also you can multiply by RC. Okay. So, IC1 minus IC2 into RC is nothing but what is it? V02 minus V01, that is the differential output voltage. The differential output voltage is V02 minus V01, this divided by RC into IC1 plus IC2 is same as alpha times IE1 plus IE2. So, alpha times IE1 plus IE2 which is nothing but I0. And this and that thing is nothing but I know. So, what do we get here? This is equal to exponent x minus 1, exponent x plus 1 is also equal to exponent V i d by 2 V t plus minus exponent minus V i d by 2 V t divided by exponent V i d by 2 V t plus exponent which is a well known tan hyperbolic so tan hyperbolic V i d or we can now put down the input output relationship as V naught 2 minus V naught 1 equals V naught differential output differential which is equal to alpha RC into I naught that multiplied by tan hyperbolic V i d by 2 V t. This is an important output versus input characteristic of the differential amplifier using bipolar transistor. Okay. And this nonlinearity is quite uh, useful. This is what is called saturating nonlinearity. Okay. The differential amplifier has two limits within which its output can swing and the upper two limits okay these are going to be governed by primarily the transistor amplifier going to saturation. saturation that is the transistors need not go to saturation right now we have to see how this happens okay what is it that happens where the limiting nonlinearity is due to saturation output gets saturated how does it happen so this is an important uh, criteria which we have to see so let us depict this pictorially this relationship v not d versus vid i would like to plot 
how will it look like? Obviously, When VID is negative, when VID is negative, because this again let us write down this so that your exponent VID by VT minus 1 exponent VID by VT plus 1. So, when VID is negative, this quantity is going to go towards 0. Okay. This also is going towards 0. That means, this whole thing is minus 1. So, this factor is minus 1. That means, output voltage is going to be minus alpha R C I naught okay. when V i d is negative. Now, V naught d has been put as V naught 2 minus V naught 1. So, that means, we are putting this as this as positive and this as negative. So, it is starting with this. minus alpha R C I naught. It is starting with that and then go on become linear there and will go to as V i d becomes very large, this quantity is huge compared to 1. This also is huge compared to 1. So, this quantity goes towards 1. That means, V naught d goes towards alpha R C i naught. Okay. So, this is something that changes the value of the transfer function okay, basically from plus to minus 1 plus 1 to minus 1. So, alpha plus. So, this is the saturating nonlinearity that is nothing but the tan hyperbolic curve. And as you see, it is linear around V i d equal to 0. So, once again, what is this uh, expansion in terms of V i d by 2 v t, tan hyperbolic expansion? Do you know? Tan x, tan hyperbolic x. So, this expression alpha R C i naught tan hyperbolic V i d by 2 V t can be shown to be equal to expanding tan x as x minus x cubed by 3 that is alpha R C i naught into x is V i d by 2 V t minus x cube which is V i d by 2 V t whole cube divided by 3. The other higher order uh, terms power 5 etcetera are ignored. So, the next higher order term is the cubic indicating clearly that if I have V i d as V p sin omega t for example, a sin wave input there will be only third harmonic or odd harmonics existing in this. That is easy to grasp because this particular nonlinearity is hyperbolic than. Whereas, in a common common emitter amplifier, it is simply exponential and therefore, it will have x squared by 2 factorial, x 3 by 3 factorial and so on. So, the second harmonic, third harmonic, all these factors 
also come into picture. That for as far as this structure is concerned, inherently it is having less distortion than the common common emitter amplifier. In place of common emitter amplifier therefore, we must necessarily use a differential amplifier if it is the IC. There is no need to therefore, ever use common emitter amplifier as an amplifier at all in any of the designs. Therefore, this particular output as alpha RCI naught into V i d by 2 V t, this is the basic wanted amplified output wherein this factor can be easily identified as alpha RCI naught by 2 V t is nothing but uh, G m into R c. Alpha I naught by 2 V t is the G m of the differential amplifier that into R c is already known to be the gain small signal gain of the amplifier. So, this is G m into R c into V i d minus alpha R c I naught divided by now 8 into 3 24 V t cube V i d cube. This is going to contribute to uh, harmonic distortion, third harmonic distortion. Therefore, if V i d is equal to let us say V p sin omega t, we would like to know how much percentage distortion occurs in this. That can be easily evaluated by this G m into R c is the gain of the amplifier for the low uh, valued signal and this into V p sin omega t is the output due to fundamental and that alpha I naught R c by uh, 2 V t again this is again G m into R c. So, we will take that G m into R c alpha R c I naught by 2 V t has been taken. So, we have 12 V t q uh, squared and this is V p cube sin cube omega t which is nothing but 3 sin omega t minus sin 3 omega t 4. by 4 V t into V p cube. Thank you. So, we can see here that as far as the third harmonic is concerned, it is multiplied by the same gain G m into R c as that of the fundamental. Apart from that, there is a factor here which is coming okay this is g m into r c into v p is the peak amplitude of the fundamental as against that we have the harmonic r c into v p is the peak amplitude of the fundamental as against that we have g m into r c into v p okay into v p squared by 48 v t squared as the additional factor coming into picture. So, if I specify now that the distortion of this signal should be restricted to 1 percent, then you can take this as the ratio of the third harmonic to fundamental. So, percentage distortion is going to be okay, ratio of this divided by this which means V p squared by 48 V t squared into 100. So, if I say that this should be restricted to 1 percent, then you can find out what the value of V p should be in terms of V t. You will definitely know that this distortion, okay, when it is restricted to a specific value of 1 percent, okay, the signal that you get as V p is going to be much higher than the corresponding 
uh, amount of signal for the same amount of distortion in common emitter amplifier okay because of the fact that in the common emitter amplifier it is exponential nonlinearity that comes into picture when the signal is zero and both the currents will be equally divided i not by 2 i not by 2 so i not by 2 is the operating current and therefore uh, this uh, differential amplifier has the same small signal uh, gain as that of the common emitter amplifier. Now, <coughs> what is this saturation that occurs? The current initially is let us say when these two are connected together to ground, the input voltage is 0, the currents will be I naught by 2, I naught by 2 that is the quiescent state where the uh, output voltage here will be VCC minus I naught by 2 into RC, VCC minus I naught by 2 into RC. So, the differential output voltage is 0. So, for the input 0, output is 0. Okay. Now, when the signal here increases in relation to that, the current here is going to increase because we know I E 1 by I E 2 okay, is nothing but exponent V i d by V t. So, when V i d increases the current here increases okay, current here will decrease because I E 1 plus I E 2 is a constant I naught. So, ultimately the current in this will become totally equal to I naught and this will be 0 at which point of time it has reached one limit of saturation right what is it the output voltage here is going to be vcc minus i not rc and here it will be vcc and therefore it has reached vcc minus vcc minus i not rc that is i not rc right? that is what we are seeing there okay and on the other hand when this voltage increases and this voltage decreases exponent V i d by V t goes towards 0 right or the ratio of this current to this current increases enormously I e 2 becomes larger than I e 1 and ultimately I e 2 becomes equal to I naught and this becomes equal to 0. This is an important method of switching called current switching or this is called current mode logic. So, this is called current mode logic or current switching or it is also called emitter coupled logic. So, the same building block is also a generating a family of logic circuits which are called emitter couple logic which are the fastest logic families known so far. Right? Why is it fastest? Because the none of the transistors themselves go to saturation state. Okay? So, the switching occurs merely by the current getting switched by the voltage from one transistor to the other. So, this way we are preventing the transistor going from going deep into saturation and therefore, this is a current mode logic which is the first. Okay. So, you can see that as far as the logic uh, swing is concerned, the logic level swing is concerned, it is also governed totally by what I naught and RC as long as the transistors do not go to saturation that is the requirement as long as the transistors themselves do not go to saturation the swing is independent of what the supply voltage etcetera and it is equal to I naught into RC on either side of the operating point plus I naught RC and minus I naught RC. Okay. So, if you say I would like to design in a differential amplifier working on a load of 1 kilo ohm 
operating at a I naught of 1 milli ampere straight away I know what the voltage swing is what is it 1 kilo ohm and 1 milli ampere 1 volt okay peak to peak is the possible swing of the differential amplifier you can straight away say as long as the transistors do not go to saturated that is still the requirement okay. So, based on this you can design a differential amplifier for the required swing output swing okay. Now this differential amplifier is basically used as an emitter couple logic in logic families or also in uh, analog circuits it is used as a, an input stage and it has major responsibilities as an input stage. It should have high input impedance if it is a voltage control device it should have high input impedance and another important factor is what is it high input impedance high common mode rejection ratio this aspect we have to discuss what is it what is common mode operation let us see this. So, we are now discussing about the common mode operation where suppose V i 1 equal to V i 2 is equal to V i common mode that means there is no differential signal the differential signal is nothing but V i 1 minus V i 2 V i 1 is made equal to V i 2 and it is a common voltage V i c. So, this is connected to same voltage as this then what happens as far as this circuit is concerned this particular voltage will follow this in this manner the V i c minus V gamma will appear here right that is all this is a current source and it will not have its current changed that means there is no increase in current of these two stages that means output will remain at what value output will remain at VCC minus I naught by 2 RC and this also is going to remain at VCC minus I naught by 2 this is an important factor that you should note that when these two voltages are maintained the same nothing happens nothing should happen in the ideal differential amplifier it is ideal because we are putting an ideal current source the voltage here follows this in the following manner that it will be V i c minus V gamma here and therefore this is seeing an ideal current source no change in current occurs obviously and therefore there is no change in voltage here and this remains constant at VCC minus I naught by 2 hertz. But then this voltage can vary it may be a signal right which has a common mode voltage component. So this can increase or decrease but nothing happens to this this remains constant at a DC value of VCC minus I naught by 2. So what happens then? The only thing that can happen let us see when this voltage keeps on increasing the reverse bias voltage of this will keep on decreasing a point will reach when collector potential becomes same as base potential thereafter if you increase this the transistor will go to what saturation. So that means the common mode voltage has this effect on the differential amplifier it can drive the transistors unnecessarily to saturation when the common mode voltage increases this way this transistor may be driven to saturation if it is driven to saturation what happens the output is going to be linked to the input that means the phase difference earlier existing between the output and the input is lost output will follow the input. Okay. That means output will follow the input 
if that happens and if this is an input stage of a now operational amplifier or something like that if one phase difference is lost then if that op amp is connected in a negative feedback mode now when the phase difference is lost it is going to be connected in positive feedback mode this is what is called latch up you might have heard of this this problem is called latching up why just nothing has been done only the signal has increased at a particular signal level suddenly the op amp turns itself into positive feedback mode and then what is latch up once it turns itself into positive feedback mode output will be going to the highest value and thereafter it is not able to come down even if the input is decreased so it just get caught there it remains there until you again switch off the whole thing bring it back to the original state and then increase the input signal so this kind of latch up problem is a very serious problem in op amp design in the first few generations of op amp design on that side also we got the same signal like ac yeah so the chances also will be doing into saturation yeah both so what happens actually this effective uh, po uh, polarity difference is due to a single stage amp right so this we are connecting it to another stage which which will have also have a phase difference and then phase difference and ultimate output is going to be okay a single ended output let us say so from that output to the input if you have some kind of feedback now that negative feedback is going to turn itself into positive feedback so when you give negative feedback you might connect the uh, output through some resistor to this input so this also has gone to saturation that means this phase shift also is responsible for converting it into positive feedback okay it is the overall feedback which turns itself into positive feedback and therefore this latch up problem has to be avoided in a design as far as possible what is it due to it simply because the transistors are going to saturation what is it primarily due to i have to have an rc and i have to have i not rc by 2 we had earlier seen that the signal swing output swing depends upon i not into rc if i want large signal swing obviously i must have i not rc considerable value that is one point and also we have seen that the gain of the amplifier is dependent upon i not into rc so if you ever want large gain i not rc is going to be huge so there is some problem now if i want a good differential amplifier i am now caught up with this situation that it will have poor common mode swing capability but this could happen even in a differential configuration pardon in the differential configuration also this could happen like sometimes the this is the differential con configuration even if it is differential output the same effect is going to be had okay so one phase shift if it is lost the feedback will turn itself into positive feedback due to signal amplitude okay this this can happen in any amplifier where the amplifier is driven to saturation any amplifier stage where you have successive stages of amplifier one such stage goes into saturation this is not a necessary evil happening only in a stage like this okay it can happen in any amplifier okay it can happen in uh, situations where one device is connected to another device okay and there is a feedback okay so even there the device one device goes to saturation then it becomes positive feedback okay that's why this latch up problem is also there in digital circuits not just analog circuits okay so this latch up problem that folk has to be tackled how do you tackle it data you need input from within color and base so that you should not wait when you have saturation no this whole problem is that i if if it will be if we put a collector to base diode what will happen it will be going to the border of saturation you are not preventing it from 
going into the saturation is just going going to the border of saturation right then the signal level i mean you are just simply limiting the signal level of operation that is not right i want the signal to swing pretty high or i want the gain to be pretty high so what should you do the problem here is just this this voltage is far different from this supply voltage strictly the common mode voltage should be as much as the supply voltage can you have that you have to replace rc by a dynamic resistance not a resistance which has the same uh, that is dc drop will be higher okay when the ac drop is higher or AC, when the, when you want the ac drop to be higher dc drop also has to be higher but we want a situation where the dc drop has to be very low but the ac okay resistance should be very large so that is nothing but a current source so why not replace this rcs by means of current sources so if you replace this rcs by means of current sources okay then we can see that that current source can have a dc drop of v gamma and still remain a current source that means this common mode voltage can go as much as vcc minus v gamma is it clear so this is the design operation in the case of uh, what is called third generation op amp all the previous generation op amps second and first generation op amps used resistive configurations like this and landed themselves in serious problems of latch up okay and uh, this was uh, the user was not able to understand why it is misbehaving when the signal level is getting increased okay so this was a nuisance and therefore they not to prevent this they put dynamic resistors here how do you replace this will replace this by means of current sources now already current operating current is determined by this i not by 2 i not by 2 here i cannot fix current sink determines the operating current here which means this cannot be independent current sources they should be dependent upon this current they should be just drawing whatever current is coming through it that means obviously these currents have to be made current mirrors so if this is i not by 2 this will be i not by 2 now when the signal is not appearing because of putting current mirror here okay i am making this dependent current sources okay so whatever is flowing here will also flow here so you now you can see how current mirror which was earlier used only for biasing application becomes a very useful component to simulate a large resistance not only that but cause a small dc drop in trying to simulate a large resistance so what is the large resistance that is simulated is nothing but 1 over okay. hoe right which is resistance of the order of hundreds of kilo ohm to mega ohm and if you had to put such resistance and operate at 1 milliampere current you might have to operate with the vcc of how much 1 milliampere across 100 kilo ohm hundreds of volts whereas no such requirement here not only that we have the common mode voltage now it can swing up to vcc minus v gamma and no problem occurs now normally output voltage cannot swing as much as vcc itself and therefore there is no eventuality of any latch up problem at all because of this arrangement is this point clearly understood because this is some point which uh time and again 
people fail to understand why a given amplifier stage goes to saturation or latch up situation because of signal level okay and that is tackled by this now you see we have got rid of the resistance which we anyway didn't want in an integrated circuit okay so we have got rid of that resistance and the differential amplifier is made up of nothing but transistors and this also is going to be a transistor current source right so you can replace this also by a transistor current mirror here for causing the bias what is the i not value now you we have been next v e e minus v gamma by r so the current source current is going to be v e e minus v b e by so now in the entire configuration which can be very usefully used as input stage for any device or amp or comparator or anything has only transistors and what is the ability of the input common mode swing here the stage remains undisturbed even when vic goes up to vcc minus v gamma on this side and up to what value on the other side it can keep on going down no problem this will be following this as vic minus v gamma and this will be going on decreasing and when this potential becomes equal to minus vee plus v gamma this transistor will go to saturation that means it can go as much as minus vee down right no problem that means common mode swing can happily go from one supply voltage okay up to the other supply voltage without disturbing the input circuitry okay so this is an important uh, achievement in the later generation of amp designs that is to make the input stage handle high common mode swing as much as the supply voltage okay so we have now seen how this input stage of an op amp gets developed how the load resistance gets replaced by means of a current meter how the biasing also is done by current meter in the next class we will discuss about what are the non idealities how the common mode voltage also is going to disturb the output because of the non ideal current sources that we are using and how common mode rejection ratio is not the ideal value of infinity but something finite but can be made very high etc okay one point i would like to uh, tell as far as the differential signal is concerned the gain is gm into rc same as the uh, different what is that common emitter amplifier but the input impedance is now 2 re into hfe plus 1 right because you have 2 re resistance coming here and you are looking at the base so hfe plus 1 or beta plus 1 is the input impedance of this stage so the input impedance differential mode is 2 re into beta plus once again you can see what is re two times re is vt divided by i not by 2 okay into beta plus 1 or this is equal to uh, how much is it 4 vt by i not 
Qui est en face. That means another design parameter for the input stage. I not fixes up the gain. I are the I not higher is the gain. That is one. But yeah, I not lower the I not higher is the input impedance. There is a problem. That is, if you want the input impedance to be high, you have to lower the I not. Okay. So you cannot have the responsibility of both input impedance and gain given to the input stage. It is like the watchman. Watchman is a gatekeeper. Okay, he is facing the outside world. So a lot of people are coming. I mean, we don't know what kind of people are coming and trying to get into the house. So major responsibility is there as far the watchman is concerned to identify the character and see whether they are people who can be allowed inside. Inside the hosts are there, they are entertaining the people who come. right? So once they are admitted by the watchman, the entertainment is given without any partiality. Right? So the input stage, the hosts have certain responsibility. Okay, of entertaining. That is the major responsibility, let us say. But the input stage, the watchman should not start entertaining the guests. Right? That will be a danger. Okay? If you want the watchman also to entertain the guests, then he will not discharge his original responsibility properly. That is why, as far the input stage is concerned, the more important thing is input impedance and common mode swing, not the gain. So we will try to sacrifice gain as far as input stage is concerned. So the same stage can be designed for different requirements. Okay? The next stage may be again, again a differential amplifier, but when it is next stage, then it does not have the responsibility of input impedance and common mode swing. At that point of time, we can worry about maximizing the gain for that stage and therefore we should not load the input stage too much in terms of responsibilities. Okay? So, we will continue further in the next class.